Hi everyone, it's Roma Fisher. Thank you for tuning in again into our program. We have prayer counselors waiting for you to uh, call in. And if you need to uh, pray with somebody, you need somebody to agree with you, uh, they're willing to pray. They're waiting for you. And they're people full of the Spirit and full of faith. And they will help you get on and get to, get your prayer answered. And I believe that uh, they'll be a blessing to you. And uh, they're waiting for you right now. So we're going to pray with you again after the program and uh, and have, um, you know, another connection with you. So watch the program. Hope you go, hope you'll enjoy it. And I believe you will. So we'll, we'll come back right after this. Jesus defeated the enemy. And he's given us the victory. No need, no need in asking God to give you the victory because he's already given the victory. Lots of times I just see that there's no way I can do this. But God's the one, he's going to get it for you. The scripture is saying that God is, is for us, he's with us. Hello viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Or praying hard against a demon. That's not spiritual warfare. They're already defeated. Amen. Those de demons are already defeated. Jesus already beat them. Your part, spiritual warfare is when the devil comes to you and disturbs your mind, and you start thinking negative, and then you start feeling bad and fearful about what might happen according to what you're thinking that he's putting there for you. And so you're imagining all this wicked stuff happening. And this is called spiritual warfare. It's happening over here. And so demons, they're coming. And then, you know, uh, we understand that I was telling the staff the other day, you know, it talks about Ephesians 6.18 or 6.12 uh, it is. Uh, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness of this world, rulers of darkness of, of uh, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. So, our part is to deal with those three levels of spirits that are here on, in the world. These, uh, those spirits. Those evil spirits that are in this present world, they're ruling over those powers and principalities and they get them to do whatever to people. And we have to deal with these spirits that, that's there. They're trying to override you and come against you. The spirits in the heavenlies, we don't have to deal with them. That's God's part. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Well, who's bound in heaven? Well, God is taking care of that. We're on earth. It's our part. We have to deal with these every day. So these things are trying to get to you and try to attack you and make you think wrong. And so when you think wrong, you start thinking negatively. And so if he keeps you there in worry, in stress, he'll defeat you every time. I learned this from listening to, you know, some good friends of ours. They've been in ministry for years. But if you keep him in the realm of faith, keep in the realm of the Word of God, in the Spirit, then we got the victory. 
But if we're going to look at just, a, just our present situation and, and deal with the present situation as a finality, then we're going to lose. If you're looking at a situation right now that is uh, that's seemingly insurmountable, that you cannot overcome it, it is too big for you, don't worry about it. If you know God, we just gave you two scriptures before we started this teaching that God is for you, He's with you, and He'll fight for you. Hmm? That's the message for you today. I'm going to preach extra now. Yeah, this is going to be extra. I'm going to take another offering. And we're going to give it to uh, who's here that needs money? The chicken fund. The question tonight is to whose report will you believe? Are you going to re- believe a bad report? In other words, are you going to believe what you've been hearing in your mind? The enemy always gives you a report of what some expert said. Why that couldn't be done. Why you couldn't have enough money to finish that project. Or why you can't have money in this time is COVID. Why you could never be healed. Everybody in your life that has this kind of thing, he's dead already now. Right? We talked about that the other day. I said, you know, we know who some, some he had that kind of disease. He's, he died out of that. Sometimes you're trying to get uh, you know, relief and you tell a friend of yours, you know, I got this problem, I got that problem, and, and this is happening in my body. But, you know, they say, well, I know who had that. Well, my uncle had that and he died. Well, you're trying to get encouragement, right? But that, that's, that's not how you encourage people. So we have to get good reports. So if you're focusing on the bad report or the bad, you're not going to believe, you're not going to believe God for, and get the good report. During the most difficult times in our lives, we need to focus on the good report or the, the report of the Lord. Instead of believing what, what the experts are saying, many stop at the doctor's examination room and take that as the last finality of, of what, where, what's going to happen in their lives. You know, we need to look at uh, God's report. So they stop at the, uh, at the examination room and they take that as a final, uh, final authority regarding their health. Many just believe only what the, their lawyer says about their case and there's no hope for you. Others only rely on what the banker says and how much money you can actually have rather than on what God says. We can't depend only on what the experts are saying. Yes, we respect them and understand that there's natural uh, information coming to us and we're thankful for their help. But in the natural, we can't just focus on just that because there's a higher report. God has the last say. He has a final uh, say in what goes on. The prophet Isaiah said this, I'm reading Isaiah 53, verse 1, the Good News Bible. He says, Who have believed our report? Or who have we believed? Who would have believed our report? Who would have believed our report, he's saying, basically. Who could have seen the Lord's hand in this? He's talking about Jesus coming and how he's, you know, how he's going to, you know, who, who would have believed that we'd have a Savior and that's going to be free and have to pay for anything? We should always rejoice in the Lord and only rejoice, you know, we don't just rejoice only how we, on how we feel or what we think about. We, in order for us, you'll, you'll never get joyful if you just look at the negative or just the, the report that's before you. You'll always be in a lower strat, you know, stratosphere of life if you just look at your natural and walk by that alone. If you just look at it and say, oh, this could never be done because I don't have this, I'm, you disqualify yourself and all those things. Here's what the psalmist says. He said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. Psalm 34, 1, you know, he was in trouble right when he was writing this. He said, his prayer shall continually be in my mouth. When you have a good praise report coming out of you, that is reminding you, you're prophesying to yourself how the, the end is going to turn out. Instead of speaking negatively. 
Rejoice, the Bible says in uh, Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. That's, the, that's, like what the, that's what it says over here, Psalm 34. I bless the Lord at all times. Rejoice in the Lord always, Philippians 4, 4. Whose report will we believe? So everybody wants peace, but they're not willing to do what the rest of the scriptures are saying, verse 8, you know, and talking about whose report you're going to believe. Whatever is true, things are honest and just and pure and lovely and anything good, anything of good report. Verse 8, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, think on these things. See, you can't get happy unless you change your mentality. Not just anybody's mentality, not just what the doctors are saying, not just what your friends are saying, but what did God say about it? You know, we'll only get happy only when we read the literature of God or the, what God said in His Word, what the writings are saying. So as I mentioned, He says, humble yourself under God's hand. And so we submit to the hand of God, we submit to the Word of God, and said, that's what you said. I'm going, to, I'm going to submit under your word, not what I think about it. What did God say about it? Well, he said, uh, you know, cast your anxieties on him. Don't rely on yourself. He doesn't want you to be tormented uh, in a flo- full-blown panic about what's, what may happen in your life. He cares everything about us. Why? Because he loves us. We don't yield to the temptation to fear and get into panic. Anxiety is a living hell or taste of hell on earth. We give, we give him no, uh, we give the devil no, you know, place in our lives. So, somebody said that fear comes in degrees sometimes. They come in diff- different degrees. But anyway, we want to I want you to see something over here. The good and bad report. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. The Bible says, we see here a story about the good and bad report of the land. Never speak your doubts. Never speak about your fears. Speak what God says about your situation. Speak what the Word of God says about it. Right in the middle of spiritual warfare, when you're fighting bad thoughts, learn to speak the good report like Caleb and Joshua. Don't speak like regular people do who talk about all their negative situations, all the problems they're facing, how tough life is, what they're going going through and how bad it's going to be. If you can't say anything good, don't even talk. Hi, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the program. Uh, We're excited to present uh, the Word of God every week to you. And uh, we put a lot of effort in making sure that you're getting a good nourishment of uh, the blessing of God, of God's Word, to build you up and strengthen you. Listen, we got a good um, word that's... uh, a book that we want to send out to all our partners and friends. If you want one of these books, our nonsense is going to tell you uh, about it in just a moment here. So it's, uh, it's called, Where's uh, God in My Storm? You know, we're going through lots of storms. And uh, our pastor actually wrote this book, and uh, uh, I believe that you really enjoy it. Listen to this. Our announcer will give you some information on how to get your copy. Hello, viewers and friends. We want to encourage you during this difficult season. We would like to send you a helpful book entitled Where is God in My Storm by Kenneth W. Hagen. Learn how to stand strong on God's promises and find an anchor in life's tough waters. You can get your copy of Where is God in My Storm by sending a donation of any amount to Spirit Alive. When you request a copy, please include your name and full mailing address. You can mail your donation to the address on the screen or call our helpline to process your donation through credit card. Spirit Alive is 100% donor funded. Viewers like you help us keep sharing the spirit of faith across Canada. Miigwech. Hello, viewers and partners. Contact our Spirit Alive helpline during our Sunday broadcast times. Counselors at the phones, ready to assist you with your spiritual needs, and we're here to pray with you. 
We're also here to provide partner services. Call the helpline to donate to Spirit Alive, sign up for our newsletter, order books and materials to help you grow spiritually, learn more about this ministry and upcoming events. Call us to share a praise report and let us know how the program is helping you. Call us at 807-285-9945. That's 807-285-9945. We're excited to hear from you. Thanks again, generous partners and friends. Together we're sharing the spirit of faith. Pastor Roma and Anita Fisher are celebrating 30 years of pastoral ministry in Thunder Bay. Thank you, partners and friends, for sending in your video greetings and messages of congratulations from across North America. Let's listen to those words of encouragement from our friends and partners. Hey, folks, Mark Davey here. But I wanted to take this opportunity just to celebrate with Anita and Roma Fisher and the great work they're doing there in Thunder Bay. You know, we've all known... Uh, Roma and Anita for almost 30 years now and uh, it's been really exciting to see how they've grown, matured, developed, become more well-rounded in their ministry and how God has used them to touch so many many people not only in Thunder Bay but across the nation of Canada and I'm so proud that God has allowed Anita and Roma to, to yield to his spirit and that they have been uh, workers and laborers in the kingdom of God. They've been bold, they've been aggressive They've, been, uh, they've had fortitude, they have not quit, they have uh, just keep, kept on working for the Lord in good times and bad times, they've served the Lord, and we're so grateful uh, to be a part of them, so we want to say a happy celebration, pray you'll have another 30 or 60 or 90, I know you guys are young, so uh, I just pray that your ministry will continue to expand and uh, go forward in Jesus' name. If you can't say anything good, don't even talk. Who told you you're supposed to say everything you, ha you, you think? Who told you everything you think is right and what you see is the right thing? God has a higher way of seeing things. He sees the beginning from the end. He has a better view of things. And if we just begin to look at his, at his word, we can begin to change things. Look at Numbers 13, 13. Uh, 1330. This is how faith talks. This is what Caleb and Joshua said. Let's go up at once and take the land. When they're facing giants, walls so thick, yes, there were giants. Listen. When they went over in the chapter 13 to, to spy out the land, how many of you, how many remember that they spied out the land? God, they, they went over to spy the land. No, were there giants or was it just kidding? Huh? The, the, were there giants there? Yeah. Okay, so you're facing giants. They were facing giants. You, your giant is, is that cancer? Is that fi financial problem? The big marriage problem that you have? That's your giant. Your kids that have all these problems, that does, that comes on you as a parent and, and, and your work situation or your lack of work, these are your giants. So, so those Israelites were facing giants. They were real giants. And two people decided they were not going to focus on the giant, nor will they focus on the wall. They said, we cannot penetrate this wall. It's absolutely impossible for us to, to come against this, this, this walled city so thick. How are we going to do that? So you're facing an impossible situation in your own life, and you can't see your way around it. And so two guys says, okay, let's do it. Why? Because we're so strong? Because we're so quick and fast, we can run up the wall? Two guys out of what it was, 12, 12 guys, two out of 12? He said, let's go ahead, let's go at once. Yet the, the, the majority of them says, no, we can't do it, there's no way we can do it. Those guys are huge, they're humongous. Their, their city, their walls are big. And they start talking negatively, they're, they're going to kill us. We look like little, you know, uh, 
little insects, and they're huge. Look, look at their big shoes. I bet they're wearing size 46. <laughs> look, at the, look at their big muscles, and look at this, look at that. Look how big they are and how small we are. And so they're talking this way, and, and uh, uh, here's, here's what the, the majority of the guys said uh, over there. He says, uh, no, we can't go. We're, we're, we're not strong enough. So they're looking at themselves, talking about themselves, how they can do it when God says, humble yourself under my mighty hand. The battle is not yours, but mine. Learn to take Jesus' word at it. Don't learn to take him. He's the one that that's, uh, got the victory. So two people saw opportunity, ten saw giants and lost. Forty years later, they came back to those same giants and faced those giants and were able to overcome them. A new generation arose and they were able to take those giants. So, verse 31, he says, we can't attack those people. They're stronger than we. So, and so they said here, verse 32, and they spread among the, the Israelites a bad report about the land. The land we explored devours uh, those living in it, and all the people we saw are of great size. The Bible says they slandered the land. It was true that there were giants. It was true that there were all cities. And, but they slandered what God said. They didn't speak what God said. God said, go take the land. They said, no, we can't do it. God says, by your stripes, uh, you're healed. And he said, no, I can't do it. The doctor said this. They said, I, there's no one ever done this before. You could never do this project. This project is too much money. You can't ever do it. For though we walk in the flesh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's not you fighting demons. That's you fighting and wrestling with your thoughts. That's you Learning to control the way you think. Everybody say, my mind is my mind. So when you're feeling bad, when, you're, when you have bad thoughts and it's affecting you physically, whose fault is it? It's not the devil's fault, it's you. You're the one that's thinking, this, devil never, this never works out. We've, we've had this problem. Honey, how many times have we had this problem? Oh yeah, we had that a long time. Did we ever get through it? No, we didn't. We almost died last time. So we're talking negatively. So we refuse, my wife and I refuse to talk about negative. We, just, we, don't, uh, we, we don't even think about it. The devil says, okay, worry about it. No, I, I, mean, we're not, I don't have any worries. Look what's this going to happen. No, I don't have a care in the world. I'm going to go to bed tonight. I'm not going to miss a meal. I'm going to watch this uh, hockey game. Uh, I'm going to go enjoy myself. Oh, the devil says, well, don't you care about that? What's going on? No, I don't care about it. Jesus has got it. Long as you're worried about it, you have it. And if you have it, God can't work at it. You know? And so this is something that a lot of you have to continually work at every single day. Until you get it. You can hear this again. Oh, I heard that before, yeah. You know, I, I, you can't teach me. I heard that. I can quote all those scriptures. Yeah, but is it working? You've, you've been having heart palpitations. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Casting down imaginations? Who's going to cast it down? Jesus? The Holy Spirit or an angel? Who's going to do it? You're going to do it. Casting down, you cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. That's bring it into captivity. You bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In other words, you have to take that thought and say, here's what God says about it. Instead of saying something negative, here's where the, here's where Mature people take that down and say, no, I know that happened. I know that happened before. I know I failed before. But this time, here's what God says about it. And so we need to correct ourselves. I've gone through this many times. We have to take authority over every thought 
and, and, and taking authority over your thoughts is spiritual warfare. We don't allow thoughts to, re, uh, we don't allow any thought to replace God's word in our hearts and our minds. Hi, family and friends. We want to pray with you right now. You've been maybe watching the program and something is, uh, you know, uh, you, have a, you have a need right now. If it's a physical need, if it's a financial need, if it's a spiritual need, no matter what it is, we want to come in agreement with you right now. If it's a family need, no matter what it is, Father, in the name of Jesus, and those people, just stretch your hand right now towards the screen or towards heaven in the name of Jesus. I'm going to agree with you right now. Father, you see those hands going up. You see those people stretching their hands towards the screen. I'm coming in agreement with every person that's, that's stretching their hands, relying on you and believing you right now for their needs in their physical body, for healing in their physical body. No matter what it is, we rebuke sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We come against that disease to, to leave their physical body right now in the name of Jesus. Sickness must go. Cancer must go. Diabetes must go. Weakness must go. Thank you for healing the uh, intestines and the blood uh, thing, the blood clots, and whatever it is, Father, the, the sore back, the sore neck, the sore bones. Father, uh, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for healing, the anointing of God. I call on the power of God to drive out that sickness and disease in Jesus' name. And everyone that's believing for their child, I'm coming in agreement with you right now. The child is coming back home in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the children of the righteous are delivered. The children of the righteous are free. I pray, Father, you said my enemy is your enemy. I want to thank you right now. You're my covenant partner. And so we believe with those people that their children are coming home in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, we claim financial blessing and a financial breakthrough for every person in the name of Jesus. Those of you that have sent in offerings, I'm agreeing with you right now that as you send your offering, you're breaking the back of financial problems right now in the name of Jesus. We bind every enemy that's coming against the people of God to, to, to steal from them, to destroy them, from taking from them what belongs to them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, to say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I call on your name right now. The Bible said, whosoever shall call upon the name shall be saved. Call on Jesus right now. Say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that you came and died for me. And I believe you rose at the, the, on the third day from, from the dead. Uh, and, and you rose into heaven and you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. I believe that right now with all my heart. And right now, you are my Lord and my Savior. If you prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. We'll see you next time. Write to us. Let us know that God has saved you and God has answered your prayer. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.